Do you have gas? That's gear acquisition syndrome. It's when we want to buy all the shiny new toys to play with instead of like working on the things that we should be. But it's an affliction that affects most photographers because we all want to buy the gear that will help us get the job done better. And it applies to lenses. So when you're shooting boudoir, what lenses should you actually have? Do you need all of them? Can you get by with just one? And if so, which one? Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I am a professional photographer in Silicon Valley, California. I've been specializing in boudoir for seven years. And when I first got started, I really only used one lens. And I mean, this was like started in photography. I really used my 50 millimeter prime because it was what I could afford. As a broke kid right out of college, I just moved home from living in France. I had no job, no car. Um, and that was one of the first pieces of gear that I bought. And that is like how I built my style and my portfolio and how I got going. But I've added on toys since then. And I call them toys in jest. Uh, they are tools for a job. And that's really what this video is all about. We have a job to do take gorgeous pictures. What are the tools we need to take the job? Not necessarily the ones that we want to take the job, but what do we actually need to get the job done? And then once you have those, cool, spend all the money and everything else, but what are the best lenses for boudoir? I think there are three that you should use. A 50 millimeter prime, a 35 millimeter prime, and a 70 to 200 here's why. Also, I'm drinking tea today, mint tea, instead of my usual whiskey and wine, because I've had a six-day run-in with uh, the allergies that are kicking my butt, and I haven't had a voice for five days, so if it sounds like I've smoked 600 cigarettes today, that is why. So bear with me, but I, I wanted to be here to make some videos for you. So let's talk about lenses. All right, our first lens today, the 50 millimeter 1.4. This is actually a 1.8, but bear with me. So when I got started, I bought the Canon's $99 50 millimeter 1.8, and it was a $99 lens. It was the best $99 lens on the market, but it's still made of plastic, and it's like this big, and it's it's garbage. Don't don't buy that. So when I realized that wasn't going to work, thankfully Best Buy had a good return policy. I brought it back and I just gave him a few hundred bucks and I bought a Sigma 50 millimeter 1.4 and holy smokes, game changer. The reason I shoot prime lenses over zoom lenses, because you're probably thinking, why wouldn't I just get one lens that goes from like 24 to 250 and then I only have to buy one? Well, because the more tasks the lens is capable of doing the worse it's going to be at all of those things. So this lens at 50 millimeters is going to outperform that zoom lens at 50 millimeters in every single way, uh, just like the other lenses I'm going to talk about today. And you're like, well, what does outperform mean? Well, one of them is in the aperture. So this will open up to f1.8. I recommend the 1.4 if you want to go that route. Either way, they're both stellar lenses and they let more light in. So you can shoot in darker spaces than a zoom lens that's probably only gonna get you to f3.5, maybe four or 5.6, which just like, you're gonna need more light than that. Also, depth of field. So a zoom lens that only can go to f3.5 or f5.6 is not gonna give you the same shallow depth of field, whereas the 50 prime at 1.4 or 1.8, or you could go by the 1.2 if you want, but it's not necessary. This will zoom in, or this will focus in on the eyes and give you really shallow depth of field for just beautiful, buttery portraits. You know, when the subject's eyes are super sharp, everything else is totally out of focus in the background. This little guy is gonna help you get there that zoom lens will not. So I'm not just gonna keep knocking zoom lenses, but as I talk about the lenses today, that's the reason. I choose them because they specialize in one thing, and the zoom lens is like the Swiss army knife, where the knife is garbage, the tweezers don't cut anything. I would never use that toothpick on my gums. My dentist would slap that out of my hand. Get something that specializes in that task. So I shoot this one. This is the Nikon Z series because I use Nikon mirrorless lenses uh, or mirrorless camera. I use this one. It's the Nikon 50 millimeter S, uh, which is the mirrorless 50 millimeter for the Z series camera bodies. And if you don't shoot mirrorless, then you can get a different one. But that's why they make this one in the F1.8 and not in a 1.4 or a 1.2. Honestly, I don't need the aperture to go to 1.2 and the difference of 1.4 to 1.8 also minimal, but this thing is so freaking sharp. I don't even care about that. And I shoot at F1.8 all the time. I 
I don't know that I would ever take this out of f1.8. It is that sharp at that aperture, which is crazy. So that's why I love this particular lens. But again, if you don't shoot Nikon mirrorless, great. I love the Sigma 50 millimeter lenses. They're not paying me to say that. I wish they would, Sigma. Uh, but I've been repping that lens for years because that Sigma 50 millimeter 1.4 is what I shot until I bought the second version of that when it came out. But now I have the mirrorless lenses. So definitely recommend picking up a 50 millimeter prime at a 1.4 aperture or 1.8 if your mirrorless camera will allow. There you go. All right, so lens number two is the 35 millimeter. It looks just like this 50 millimeter, but it's on my camera recording this, so I can't show you. But use your imagination. It looks the same. It just says 35 right here instead of 50. What I love about the 50 millimeter lens, I'm going to backtrack for a second and tell you why I use these two, is because it's true to eye, which means on a full frame camera, whatever this 50 millimeter lens sees, is what our eyes see proportionally. Once you go wide angle lenses, you get things that are stretched out and warped and it's a cool cinematic effect or you know, like those 90s hip hop videos where everyone's all like this or like skate videos from the 90s. I don't know, that was my generation. Fish eye lenses, those are all super wide angle and they stretch things and they warp things and it's not great for human bodies. The 50 is true to the eye. So everything you take a picture of will be proportional and almost voyeuristic. It's, it's great for street photography like photojournalism because there's no added flare of compression from a telephoto lens or wide angle distortion from a well a wide angle lens but the 35 millimeter I do love that one because it gives you a little bit of stretch and when we're photographing people that generally want to look longer and leaner a little bit of stretch is a great way to achieve that without liquefying people in Photoshop. It's not wide angle that's gonna totally destroy their proportions, but it tweaks it just enough that it's pretty flattering. And it, again, it'll stretch things out. Also with that kind of wide angle distortion, it's subtle, but it's there. So if you shoot, you know, somebody laying down on the bed, the head will be disproportionately larger than the rest of their body, which most, People in front of the camera were like, cool, can you make me look smaller? You know, that would that would be ideal for them. Not everybody, but generally nobody wants to look bigger on the camera, you know? So the 50 millimeter gets you more true to eye. I love it for that. The 35 will stretch things out just a little bit. So it depends on who you're photographing. If you want someone to not look smaller, like if you have a very, very thin person who maybe has been suffering from an eating disorder and they don't want to look thinner, you can throw the 50 on. Uh, and you can make them look more true to size. So also something to consider. They're tools for a job. What is the job we're trying to do? How well will it do that? So I love the 35. Uh, again, I used the Sigma 35 millimeter before when I was shooting Canon. Once I switched over to Nikon and the mirrorless lenses, I started using their S series because well, it's built for the mirrorless cameras. And again, I shoot that at F1.8 only. I know it has lots of other aperture values, but it's just, it's so sharp and the focus is so fast. I have no reason to not do that. Plus shallow depth of field is great for boudoir because you know, the eyes are in focus, the body is out of focus, adds mystery. Uh, you know, it's, it's a powerful storytelling element, just like we use in portraits. So the 50 millimeter lens, fantastic. 35 is also great. If you don't have a big room to shoot in, the 35 is going to be your friend too, because it allows you to still take full body length shots without, you know, having to stand outside and shoot through a window because it just gives you more field of view in a shorter space. All right, let's talk about this bad boy, the 70 to 200. I only use this one like three times in my portrait days and I would rent it when I needed it, you know? Like I photographed my friend's kid's graduation, but I'm not gonna, you know, stand on the stage of the 35 millimeter lens and totally ruin everyone else's day and photos. So I rented this guy and then after I used it a couple times, I'm like, I wonder, could I find a use for it in the boudoir studio? Because this isn't a giant space, but even if you have a giant space, I don't know, I'm not far enough away that I would ever need to zoom in on somebody to fill my frame with them. But then I got the idea, what if I used it for detail and close-up shots? Because as a male boudoir photographer, I'm very mindful of my client's personal bubble. And if they have this beautiful lacy bodysuit on that just has gorgeous, you know, lacy detail all over it, I'm not about to get up in her business with a macro lens and put it right on her boobs and be like, cool, just 
chill out for a minute while I photograph your boobs because that's also going to make her feel really uncomfortable. Uh, even if I wasn't a dude, just having someone come up and be like, I'm just going to photograph, you know, your chest real, real quick right here. Just pretend like I'm not even in the room, you know, like that, that's not going to be a thing. So what I love about this is I can put my client into a pose and I can just zoom in on the shoulder strap, on the waistband, on, you know, fingernails on the side of the face, something, and I can get my detail shots with my 70 to 200. It only goes to f2.8, which I know is still wider than most of the other lenses out there. I just love the 1.8 that my other prime lenses give me. That's on their downside of zoom lenses. I think there's only a few on the market that will open up uh, into the ones for the aperture value and still zoom. But 2.8 is still fine. I usually just bump my ISO up a couple notches to make up for the, the difference in 1.8 to f2.8. So I absolutely love this for the detail shots. And I think every boudoir photographer, male or female, should have one of these lenses for that. But if you're like, I don't do detail shots, not really my jam, that's cool. Rent one, try it out, see if your clients buy the pictures. That's what I did. I rented one for the day. It was like 16 bucks or something like that. I did two shoots that day and I just made it a point to photograph, you know, the lacy details or if there's rhinestones or rings or something that, you know, some detail my client obviously put effort into. I did close up shots of those things and they all sold. So if having this guy will up my sales, I'm going to make my money back real quick. Plus it was a tax deduction. These things aren't cheap. So that's why I recommend having a long telephoto lens, also something super sharp. But again, rent it, test drive it, see if you like it, see if your clients like it, and then decide if you want to spend the money and buy it. Because they were like, I don't know, 2,800, three grand, something like that. So not, not jump change. So those are the three lenses I think every boudoir photographer should have. The 50 millimeter prime, a 35 millimeter prime, and a 70 to 200 for all the detail shots. Again, if you don't have these, totally cool. Rent them, try them, see if you like them. Pick them up used if you want to do that. That's another great way to, to get more equipment without having to spend as much money. Um, you don't need to go broke. Don't max out all your credit cards to get these. Get the tool you need to get the job done. Use the money from those jobs to then buy more tools to get more jobs done. That's the smart way to do business and to not make this a stressful thing because being a business owner is already stressful enough. Having financial pressure is the last thing that you want to bring upon yourself. So be, be smart about your gear acquisition. Don't get gas. And I have other videos on, you know, like how to actually take the pictures and lighting and posing and how to get clients so that you can, you know, photograph them with these three lenses all here on this channel. So be sure to subscribe and check those out. And if you want to know step-by-step -step how to bring in multiple six figures of revenue for your own photography business, head to boudoirguild.com and I would love to help you out. You are amazing. See you inside.